timestamps below. Hey guys, I made this forecast guide because most of the guides out there are not fully comprehensive and don't show how to effectively deal with the acid phase. This guide will provide an in-depth explanation for all attacks, methods for weak swapping that don't involve audio cues, rune light setup, and ways to improve your kill times and reduce resource waste. This will be specifically covering the Dragon Hunter crossbow method, as it is currently the most effective weapon to kill Vorkath with, but this information should be useful regardless of your weapon of choice. I also want to mention the following icons that will appear in the corner of the video. Some of the techniques I will be mentioning vary quite a bit in how difficult they are to pull off, so I will be placing a green icon if the tech is easy and should always be performed, an orange icon if the tech is a bit difficult or distracting and should not be attempted until you have some kills on your belt, and red for a very difficult tech with tight timings that you may not want to bother with until you feel very comfortable with all of his attacks. Moving on to the requirements, you're going to need at minimum 80 ranged. If you're just going for the assembler, it may be possible to get 1-2 to two kill trips with less than this. Keep in mind your range level provides a huge DPS increase if it is higher. From level 80 to 99 is about a 20% DPS difference. You also need at least 74 prayer for rigor. Kills are possible with just eagle eye, but rigor is a 6-10% to DPS increase. I would recommend getting your prayer higher than 74 if possible as well, because prayer potions can restore as much as 31 prayer points per dose at 96 prayer. 80 plus magic, defense, and hit points is also effectively necessary with this setup. Because Vorkath attacks with magic, your magic and defense level will both make his attacks less likely to hurt you. Magic makes up 66% of your defense, and your defense level makes up 33%. You are also going to need full elite void, an imbued salve amulet, and a rune pouch. Kills are possible with regular void, but your kills will be significantly slower, and you will use more prayer. Because enchanted bolts are utilized, you should also get the Kandar and Hard Diary completed as well, as it increases your bolt's special effect proc chance by 10%. Moving on to gear, for your equipment, you're going to want to equip full elite void, make sure not to forget the gloves, salve amulet, which you imbued at Nightmare Zone, Ava's assembler, if you don't have this yet, of course, you can use the Accumulator. Enchanted Ruby Dragon Bolts. A Dragon Hunter Crossbow. Dragonfire Ward. If you're using an Odium Ward or Anti-Dragon Shield, you will need to pray Magic instead of Ranged, or he will crispify you into a Chicken Nugget with Dragon Breath. Pagasian Boots. Blessed Dehyde Boots are perfectly acceptable until you can afford these, as Pagasians are only a 1% DPS increase. And Imbued Archer's Ring. For your inventory, you're going to want to have three 4-dose Prayer Potions if you are very experienced with prayer flicking Vorkath, and have 96 plus prayer, you can elect to replace one of these for extra food. Your Diamond Dragon Bolt Switch, a 4-dose Ranging Potion and Anti-Venom Plus, a 3-dose Super Anti-Fire. The reason I don't take 4 doses is a 3-dose Potion provides 18 minutes of Anti-Fire, as much as 23 minutes if you immediately begin your next trip. A 6-skill trip should never take you more than 14 minutes. Even a lucky 7 kill trip brings us up to a max of 16 minutes. You will, a majority of the time, end up dropping the 4th dose for more loot if you bring it. Then you want 19 Manta Ray, or the cheapest 22 plus healing food you have. This is usually Manta Ray. Don't bring lower healing food as this is inefficient to use at Vorkath. A rune pouch with Law Runes, Dust Runes, and Chaos Runes. These runes together allow you to cast Crumble Undead and Teleport to House. And Fremnix Sea Boots 4. I like to stockpile quite a few of these, as I sometimes drop them to grab more loot. If you don't have the Elite Diary completed, you can place a Lunar Isle Teleport Portal inside your house and use Bird Eye Jack's Bank Booth in between trips to prep the next trip, then talk to one of the other bankers to be kicked off the island in front of the Dock to Vorkath. Unfortunately, I can't show this, as I have the Diary completed, and the bankers no longer kick me off. Moving on to my UI setup. Here you can see I highlight the extent of where his acid can go with these two back tiles and these three middle tiles in which I drop food and stand on when fighting Vorkath. If you are standing halfway between Vorkath and the entrance, he will never place acid next to the exit. If you want to copy me, you can highlight tiles by holding shift and right clicking. I set up my tile indicator plugin to highlight hovered tiles so I know where I'm going to walk before I click. I also changed the destination tile color to 3A36 3, 2. This is roughly the opposite of the snow color, making it very obvious where you are walking to. I'll be putting this color code in the description. 
I keep my XP globes turned on, but move them to just above my stat boosts in the bottom right corner. You can turn this plugin off completely instead if you prefer a less noisy UI. With boost information and timers, I turn all timers on. You may wish to turn off the freeze timer as during the spawn phase it will annoyingly pop up. I move all the timers near my inventory. That way my eyes can quickly move from my boosts to the inventory. I set my boost to display next stat always. This way if you die or your boost runs out after a trip, you can still know when to repot for max boost efficiency. I also marked use relative boost as I prefer to know exactly how much I am boosted by. I also added the zombified spawn to the NPC indicator to make it a bit easier to see during the ice phase. For my chat, I leave this on either all or game filtered. This allows you to see when your potions are wearing off more accurately. Sometimes Runelight's timers will be incorrect by as much as 20 seconds. I set both Protect from Missiles and Rigor as my quick prayers. I've seen people suggest using Preserve as well, but because this prayer only extends your boosted stats if you leave it on the entire time, it's basically worthless because you save prayer by turning them off during the ice phase and flicking. I highlight my ruby bolts green. This helps me differentiate it from the diamond bolts more effectively and serves as a reminder to re-equip them each kill. I set a default world that is the lowest possible ping. You will need to check what this is through Runelight's world switcher for your area. I have a tag tab set up in my bank. This allows me to quickly re-gear between trips. Okay, Vorkath's attacks. First, let's discuss Vorkath's regular attacks. He will use six of the following attacks before one of his two special attacks. They are used completely randomly and can be used even up to six times in a row. I have seen that happen. Ranged attack. These hairballs are his most common attack and why we pray ranged instead of magic. It also has a high max hit of 35 versus the magic attack's max hit of 30. Magic attack. This is used about a third as often as his ranged attack. It has a max hit of 30 and will be your main source of incoming damage. Orange Breath. This is his basic Dragonfire attack. If you have full fire protection, this will do zero damage. Green Breath. Another Dragonfire attack. If you have full protection, again, this will do zero damage. It will inflict venom if you have not drunk a dose of anti-venom. If you have it, quickly drink a dose of anti-venom to cure it. Pink Breath. Again, Dragonfire attack. If you have full protection, this will do zero damage. This attack will turn your prayers off. Simply click your Quick Prayers icon to turn them back on. Keep in mind these actions don't break attacking Vorkath, so you don't have to click him again. Fireball. This is his most powerful and arguably most dangerous regular attack. This can hit up to 121 damage if you are sitting directly under it when it lands. It will do half as much damage if you are one tile away and can be completely avoided by walking two tiles away or more. I want to mention his melee attack. If you approach his melee range, Vorkath can choose to swing at you for high damage. You should never encounter this attack when you're using ranged. After using six attacks, Vorkath will begin the ice phase or the acid phase. The first time he uses one of these attacks, he will randomly choose one or the other. After this, he will alternate between them accordingly. Ice Breath. This will do no damage, but will instantly freeze your character in place like an ice barrage and prevent Vorkath from taking any damage until the phase ends. Vorkath will launch a zombified spawn nearby that will slowly crawl towards you. If it reaches you before you kill it, the spawn will explode and deal damage with a max hit of 60. Crumlin Dead will always instantly kill the spawn. If you are attempting Vorkath with a Dragon Hunter Lance, you may have a negative magic attack bonus, which can cause you to splash on the spawn. This is why I don't advise using a melee setup. The ice phase is the best time to eat during the fight because you can do no damage to Vorkath anyway. You want to count six of his regular attacks after the acid phase so you know when Vorkath will freeze you and you can prepare to click a tile when it happens. Because when this phase starts, your character will continue to attack Vorkath. If you accidentally attack Vorkath twice, you will definitely not have enough time to kill the spawn, let alone eat any food. If you don't attack Vorkath at all, you can eat as much as three pieces of food during this phase. I'll discuss this in more detail in the kill improvement section towards the end of the video. The acid phase is by far the most mechanically complicated and difficult attack to deal with. All damage done during this phase is halved, including ruby bolt specs. Vorkath will lift his neck and spew forth huge amounts of acid that will coat the ground on random tiles. If you are far enough away from the entrance, no acid will spawn by it. This is why you want to stand on the marked tiles. 
Vorkath will then spit fireballs that will land where you were standing each tick. If you are standing still at any point during this phase, fireballs will hit you each tick and they can hit well over 30 each. If you accidentally walk into any of the acid, it will hit you for 7 to 10 damage each tick, and these damage splats will heal Vorkath for the equal amount of damage it did. If you are inexperienced and are having difficulty with any other part of the fight, I would recommend simply walking around the arena and avoid attacking him until you get a handle on his other attacks. A blob of acid will always land where your character was when the phase started, so you always need to move as soon as the phase starts. You can also see the acid in the air right before it hits the ground. This gives you one tick to react and try to avoid the acid. Wooks walking. The Dragon Hunter crossbow can be fired every five ticks when it is on rapid. This means you need to walk at least four tiles before firing at Vorkath. The back wall is exactly one tile away from the range you can fire at Vorkath from. This causes you to take a step forward when you click on Vorkath to attack him, so as to not get hit. As soon as Vorkath throws his head back, you need to walk to the back wall and begin wooks walking. Now I've seen a lot of methods people employ to wooks walk this phase with the crossbow, but none of them are categorized very effectively in other videos. This is the main reason I wanted to make this video in the first place. I will be laying out each method I use in order to continue damaging Vorkath. The 5 step. This is the easiest and most effective way of walking Vorkath. It involves clicking 5 tiles away, this includes the tile you are standing on, and then clicking Vorkath once the tile indicator disappears. Then again, clicking 5 tiles away back where you started, and clicking Vorkath when the indicator disappears, and repeating. Keep in mind, if you do not directly click the tile, say, let's say you click the wall behind the tile. Runelight will not generate a tile indicator. This is the least click-intensive and simplest method I have found for Wooks walking Vorkath. Unfortunately, it requires quite a bit of area to work with, and sometimes you can't use it. I would recommend only using this method if you have never Wooks walked before, and simply walking without attacking Vorkath until you get experienced enough that you are not taking damage during this phase and can use the other methods. Four step. This is a slightly harder method than the five step, but it's much more condensed. It is like the five step, but after each attack you walk backwards one tile, and to the left or right, four tiles. This causes your character to walk in a horizontal line, allowing you to walk underneath the acid if there's not enough room to do a regular five step. Three step. This is the most click intensive and hardest walking method. This method condenses the area required to only six tiles. To perform this method, you attack Vorkath, click three tiles away on the back wall, click behind where you attacked Vorkath originally, and click Vorkath again. You very rarely need to use this method, and it is much harder to pull off, so I recommend only attempting this method if you feel very comfortable with Vorkath. Unkinking. Sometimes you have the area required to do a 5-step, but your character is oriented in such a way that it is not possible. All you have to do is unkink by clicking 4 tiles away, then when the indicator disappears, click a tile to the left and back to the right, or vice versa. This wastes one tick, but it's very worth doing if it allows you to wooks walk more easily. Here I enter the arena. I run straight up to Warcath and poke him to start the fight. I started a trip earlier, so you can see I already am semi-buffed, so I don't need to repot. And I begin flicking. So that first attack was the one that disables your prayers. Here I get venomed because I didn't have venom protection on, and I unfortunately did take a hit splat of venom, but that's okay. You save more resources by not potting early. And standard attack, here comes a special. It's acid phase first this time. And we can see I don't really have space to do a 5-step, so I'm just going to go right into a 4-step. I just walk backwards each attack and go to the right 4-steps, left 4-steps. Very simple. And I just repeat that until that phase ends. And walk right back up, flick my prey ranged right back on. And we'll see another 6 attacks. So that's his 2nd attack, 3rd attack, 4th attack. You'll see I'm not flicking here because he's kind of off sync. Disable my prayers, I'll just flick those right back on. And there's that special attack. So I want to eat right away because this is the ice phase, it's the best time to eat. And right back to attacking. I could have attacked a tick earlier if I'd clicked him a bit earlier, that was a mistake. Also here I should be swapping my bolts, but I don't realize it until a little bit later. And I realize it right about here I need to swap my bolts. My health is too low, so I need to eat right as that mage attack comes. That's a tick eat right there. 
And it's almost the same layout as last time for this acid phase, so I'll go right back to four-stepping. I probably should have eaten during this phase, but it's okay. My health's only at 22, but that's fine. We're going to go right back into it. Unfortunately, if his attacks are off sync just correctly, uh, when that purple Dragon Breath comes out, it will disable your prayers and you'll miss an attack with Rigor off. And unfortunately, I miss so much here that I have to do another Ice Phase. So I just eat one piece of food because I know one more hit will kill him. Flick those prayers back on. There you can see I attacked right at the right time. And that kills over. Simple as that. And I'll walk right over, pick up all my loot. Unfortunately, I got a Wrath Talisman. I'm just going to leave that right in the ground. That's his worst drop, basically. And go right back to it. Here I'm going to discuss some methods you can use to improve your kill speeds and retain resources. Something to keep in mind, Vorkast instance is very special in that all items on the ground in the instance will not disappear for 30 minutes. This effectively means you can leave all items on the ground the entire trip. This allows you to juggle food and supplies with Vorkath drops. The reason my trips typically last 6 kills is because that is the point where your inventory is usually completely full of loot. If you were incredibly comfortable with Vorkath and were never dying, you could just leave all the loot he drops on the ground until the end of the trip to save some time. Now, even I don't do this, as I still die occasionally, and all the drops on the ground are lost when you die. Swapping bolts effectively is very important when it comes to kill speed. I've seen some people swap their ruby bolts for diamond bolts at 35%, but these people aren't accounting for the diamond bolts proc chance being 5% higher than the ruby bolts. Not to mention Ruby Bolts continue to damage you the same amount regardless of Vorkath's health. You are going to want to swap your Bolts at 40% health. This is the most effective time to do it for the most DPS. Repotting effectively can increase your kill speed greatly. Keeping in mind each range level is about a 1% DPS increase, you want to keep your range level as high as possible for the entire trip. For me, I typically let the boost decay to a plus 9 and then immediately repot. Eating at the wrong times can slow your kills down significantly. Here's a list of the following most efficient times to eat. Eating in between kills is truly the most efficient time to eat, but obviously this is not always possible. Make sure you always eat to near full health after each kill. Eating during the ice phase is the next most efficient time to eat because you can do no damage to Vorkath anyway. If you eat only one piece of food right when the breath leaves his mouth, you waste zero ticks. Keep in mind, eating more food causes you to kill the spawn slower, which will slow your kills down a tiny bit and might cause you to get hit by the spawn. You can eat two pieces of food if you eat right as the breath leaves his mouth, if you haven't attacked him accidentally. Then, after casting Crumble Undead at the spawn, you can eat a third piece of food. Eating during the acid phase is the only other time I like to eat food. You do half damage during this phase anyway, so it can be a reasonable time to eat food. Now, it can be kind of awkward and difficult to eat during this phase because you have to time when you eat so you don't waste damage ticks. Vorkath is also one of the easiest monsters to tick eat as his attacks take 5 ticks to reach you. When your health drops below 30, you can wait to eat a piece of food until Vorkath is firing a magic attack. This will save you quite a bit of health over time. There are also various ways of saving your prayer. You definitely want to turn your prayers off completely during the ice phase. This is very easy to do and saves tons of prayer throughout the fight. I also like to flick whenever Vorkath hits you on the same tick you attack. This prevents you from using any prayer during those six attacks. It is also possible to flick if he is one tick off sync. Your prayers drain every three ticks, so if he's more out of sync than that, flicking is pointless. Finally, I like to turn my ranged prayer off during the acid phase, but keep rigor on. Because you have to manually turn Protect Ranged off, this can be more difficult than you would think. That's all for this video! I really hope this helps you guys out, as I had a very hard time trying to figure out how to kill Vorkath originally with the other guides that were available at the time. This video took me quite a few hours to make, so if you could hit like or subscribe, that would help me out quite a bit. If this video gets enough traction, I might make videos on the other gear setups. Thanks guys!